we begin with basic algebraic geometry. So we have the notions of affine varieties and Zariski closure. We start with the ring R. So we have C adjoined variables x1 through xn. This is the ring of polynomials over the complex numbers and n variables. For us, the main ring theoretic properties of R are going to be, okay, first, R is a UFD. So any non-zero element has a unique factorization okay, into irreducibles up to a unit. And we also have the R's no theory. Okay, so that means if we take any ideal I inside of R, that ideal must be finitely generated. Okay, note, UFD doesn't necessarily imply no theory. Now, that gets us to the definition of an affine variety in CN. So what we'll do, we'll start with an ideal in R. Since it's finally generated, okay, I can write it as being generated by irreducible polynomials F1 through FL. Then that gives us our definition Okay, I have V of I. This is just going to be the common set of zeros for all F in our ideal. Okay, and note, because this is finitely generated, we could just take the zero set for each F sub I, okay, I between 1 and L, and then take the intersection of those sets. Now, in the other direction, if I'm given any subset of CN, okay, we can attach an ideal to that just by taking all polynomials that vanish on our set X, okay, the points of X, at the same time. Now, the relationship between I and V is summarized by the Hilbert null Stellens odds. Since C is algebraically closed, we take any ideal I, okay, take the variety for I, take the ideal for the variety, what we'll get is the radical of I. So essentially all we're doing is drawing down powers of elements in I. One more definition, we'll say a variety V is irreducible. If v cannot be written as a proper union of two other varieties. So when we draw the picture for V, there will only be one piece. Now, for some simple examples, okay, because the point of doing torque varieties is to provide a whole class of examples. First, okay, if we're only in one variable over the complex numbers, okay, we have the fundamental theorem of algebra, take a non-zero polynomial, a non-constant polynomial, okay, we have a factorization, and then the zero set is just going to be a collection of finitely many points in the plane. Okay, this will be irreducible only if there's a single point. Simplest way to generate varieties that are not irreducible, okay, I could take any two non-constant polynomials, take their product, and then take the ideal generated by that. So for example, for in C2, I take x1 times x2. Okay, we're going to get coordinate axes. This has two pieces okay, that are varieties. Okay, x1 equals 0, x2 equals 0. So this is not irreducible. Another example, okay, again in C2, we could take x1 squared plus x2 squared minus 1. Okay, if I set that equal to 0, the intersection with the real coordinates just going to give us the unit circle. Okay, and this will be irreducible. Okay, for an example where there's a proper intersection happening, let's take, okay, we're in C3. I'll take the ideal generated by x1 minus 2, x2 minus 1, and then all we're doing here is taking the intersection of two planes parallel to the coordinate planes, and that's just going to give us, okay, in the real picture it's a line, in the complex picture it's going to be a complex line or a plane. An important feature of algebraic geometry is the interplay between geometry and the ring theory. For instance, we have the notion of irreducible. So if V is an irreducible variety, okay, ring theoretically, the way we would say that is that the ideal for V is a prime ideal. Okay, we're going to see this idea over and over and over again. Okay, geometry pairing up with ring theoretic notions. Now, we we'll consider the Zariski topology on CN. Now this is going to be built out of using varieties as closed subsets. So we've got to think of topology in terms of closed subsets. So what do we need? Well, three properties. I'll leave it to you to show them. 
Okay, first we would want the empty set and our space in the topology. Okay, that's not difficult to see. We also want, okay, finite unions of varieties to also be varieties. Okay, and that'll happen because if we take the varieties for two ideals, take our union, that's just the variety of the intersection, okay, and so on. And then if I want arbitrary intersections of closed sets to be a closed set, we know if I take an arbitrary intersection of varieties, okay, we're just going to take the variety for the ideal generated by all of their ideals. Okay, and so you need to show that. Okay, and so we get a topology here. This topology has some weird features. Okay, the main one is that it's not going to be Hausdorff. Okay, it's going to be extremely not Hausdorff. So we're not going to have nearly as many open sets as we do in the usual topology for CN. Of course, what you can see this is there are not nearly as many polynomials as there are continuous functions on CN. So there won't be as many open sets. Big tool for us is going to be the notion of Zariski closure of a subset inside of CN. Now, the way I get the Zariski closure, okay, so if I have a subset X, okay, we're just going to take X itself, and then we're going to take all points such that whenever I have a polynomial that vanishes on X, okay, we'll want the points that vanish for all those polynomials. Now, to wrap your head around how do I get the Zariski closure if I just get a set, what do I do? Well, this is not as bad as it seems. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our set X. I'm just going to take all polynomials that vanish on the set X, okay, assuming we can do that somehow. Once we've done that, we note our ring is Noetherian, so this ideal is just going to be generated by finitely many polynomials. And then for the Zariski closure, we're just going to take the intersection of the varieties that go with each of those polynomials. So what we promise is when we look for a Zariski closure, if I want to completely describe something, it's enough for me to give you this set of polynomials here. And then you could figure out the rest, in theory. Here's a basic example of Zariski closure. We'll see more when we get to toric varieties. So if we're in one dimension, okay, where are the closed subsets? We have the empty set, we have any finite subsets of the plane, and we have the plane itself. So this means if we take any infinite subset of the plane, it's a risky closure must be the plane itself. So for instance, if we took the integers, okay, it's a risky closure, plane itself. In this case, we see the ideal vanishing on all the integers. Only polynomial that does that is the zero polynomial. Now, we want to put topologies on the varieties themselves. So if we want the Zariski topology on variety, say, V sub i, then the closed subsets are just going to be the varieties that are contained in V itself. Okay, so we're just taking the induced topology. Now, if I have some subset X in our variety, okay, the Zariski closure is going to be exactly the same. We're just going to take the intersection of all varieties in V that contain X. So more or less the same as what we did before. finish, we want to note a special class of varieties. Okay, these are going to be the distinguished open subsets in CN. Here, we'll just pick some non-zero f in our polynomial ring. Then u sub f is just going to be CN minus the variety for f. Now, this picks up the structure of a variety by looking at this sitting inside of CN plus 1. So this is going to be space of all points in Cn plus 1, where f times extra coordinate x sub n plus 1 minus 1 vanishes. Okay, and then we have a picture. Okay, that's what this open subset looks like. 